What's happening, Feast and Friends? Welcome to another episode. I'm excited today because I got a package from another YouTuber you may very well have already watched. World's Worst Fishing. Uh, if you've not checked his stuff out, I'll link his channel below. But he contacted me a little while back about a collaboration, and I was super excited. I had no clue he even knew who I was. Um, I had seen a couple of videos of his in the past. He does a bunch of soft plastic pouring, and the dude is crazy talented. I know how much work goes into that. I've been lucky enough to go over to the bait cave with those guys, uh, Mr. Marling, Nick, Nate, all three of those guys, super cool, super humble. Um, and I think that's what you'll find about a lot of the guys, you know, who make baits, uh, just cool guys who love fishing. So um, World's Worst Fishing uh, reached out to me and said, hey, would you be interested in doing a little collab? I said, well, heck yeah, I would. So he said, I've got some baits that I would like you to try out, check out. Uh, I do some hand pouring and uh, I said, yeah, let's do it. So today we will be taking a look at all those that he sent me. He sent me four packs here. I'm going to go over what he sent me, how I plan on rigging them, and even the uh, the combos that I'm going to use. That way, in case you've got anything similar, um, you'll know that I'm also going to do another video of me fishing only his stuff uh, here pretty soon. Hopefully, we can hook up on some good fish because I tell you, these things are sweet. So now I think the name uh, Land is the Limit Soft Plastics, uh, I guess, is the name of his company. He's down in... Florida. Um, I'm sure you've seen his stuff. He does some amazing, amazing work online. Look at those soft plastics. So these are, I believe, a six inch, should be right about six inch uh, paddle tail swim bait that he does a skin pour. So it's a two sided mold. And the fun part about this collaboration is he's actually going to have a video of how he made these. Now I think he'll probably release before you see this one, but um, I'll link his video uh, at the end or below. However, I do that, I don't know. But I'll link his so you can go check his out to see exactly how these are made because these things are too dang neat. So he sent me a three pack of those babies. I'm excited to use them now. With these guys, a little bit bigger swim bait, I'm gonna rig these up on probably my favorite swim bait hook, which is a six aught owner beast, one quarter ounce. So I use this when I'm fishing shallow, uh, you know, down to like six, eight feet, whatever. I feel like this size works really well, uh, especially for bank fishing. Um, these weedless belly weighted hooks are also great for bank fishing because you don't have that big exposed hook. Now the thing that is cool about his swim baits is they do already have that belly slit there that you can see. And what that's for is when you get a, a fish to actually take it and you set the hook, it allows the belly of that uh, swim bait where that lead and everything is to push up into the cavity of the body. So you can see how that, that hook sticks out. I can get my finger all the way under that. You've got a lot of clearance more meat in that hook to actually grab the fish because if you have a soft plastic where it doesn't really go up in there if it was hitting on the bottom of the plastic there that's all i would have so um, those belly weighted swim bait uh, slot hook slots are awesome to get that hook up and exposed now the nice part about his swim baits too uh, is the head is all solid so on these owner beast hooks they already come with the owner centering pin not all um, swim baits or swim bait hooks have these and what I mean is I'm a huge fan of the owner centering pin I've talked about it on my channel a lot before this got to focus here that's what I'm talking about right there it's got a little pin you stick that in the nose of it and then you just screw that baby into the plastic and it's got a big screw lock here the problem with a lot of the hooks uh, out there on the market is they have a little tiny screw in front and then you get a bite and it rips out the nose of your bait and then it's kind of useless right you can't just tear it off because the, you, you've got a big flat piece of the bait you know it doesn't come to a, a point like a normal swim bait so it pretty much ruins the swim bait so that's why i like going with these um, the bigger stronger uh, spring holds better holds better in the meat of it before it actually tears out and kind of ruins your soft plastic so that's how i plan on rigging that big six inch looks sweet i'm excited to fish it oh and with these usually i'll just lay it like that if i'm fishing around grass and reeds and stuff if i get around real thick heavy wood you can take that hook pull it back a little bit and bury just the tip of it there. That way it's completely weedless. You can run your finger over it. You're 100% weedless. But I like to usually leave it just like that. That way a little bit of that point's exposed and it's still nice and weedless. Oh, I'm like a kid at Christmas. What's the next one? Oh, sticking with the swim bait game. Okay. So these are a little bit smaller swim baits he sent me. When I seen these, I was super, super excited because look at the colors on this. So it's like a transparent, purpley, almost like a thread fin chartreuse shad so he poured that in layers so you can see that top layer there that kind of purpley with like a green pearlescent flake shiny flake in it hopefully that shows up on camera that color is awesome nice bright chartreuse line and then kind of that pearly belly there he's got the shad spot and then look at those eyes can you see that 
He's got world's worst fishing eyes. That is awesome. And actually, one of my subscribed fishing friends surprised me. You're going to see something very similar uh, for my stuff pretty soon. So I'm pretty hyped about that. But uh, John, you're a good guy for sending me those. I appreciate it, man. But now I wouldn't go with that big uh, six aught owner beast. I was trying to find some four aughts. That's probably what I'd run. Um, these are the Berkeley Fusion three aught. I think these would fit on here just fine. Oh yeah, those will look good. And the one thing you want to make sure about uh, on the swim baits is you don't go with too big of a hook, right? So let's say all I had was like seven aught hooks and that seven aught hook goes all the way back here. Remember where you put that hook is it's going to limit the action of your swim bait. So you want to go with a big enough hook where you get a good hookup ratio, but you don't want to go too big where you're ruining the bait. So that got three out should be right here. Still got body movement, still got tail movement. You can see how much that body moves with it. Um, you don't want to go with our, gar our gargantuan hook thinking, oh, well, the bigger hook's going to be better. Then you might only get that sort of tail movement out of it. So keep that in mind. But, ooh, those babies look clean and mean. All right, next up, one of my summer favorites in the bag, some worms. I'll get that here in a minute. But uh, one of my favorite summer lures, check those babies out. So he actually does like hand pouring of worms too. I didn't know this was a thing. I didn't know they had that for like worm mold deals. Uh, but that baby is neat. So he's got like this greenish teal tail. You can see it's like a big U. It's essentially going to be like a ribbon tail worm. Um, big, nice, long U-shaped tail on it. Like this tealish green in back going up into like a, a pearl flake. And then he's got a little bit of that teal up front. I think they all look the same, yes. Yeah, so they're all exactly the same in there. A um, little bit of flake in it. I don't see any other like that pearl essence. Different color. I have never thrown anything like that in a worm. Um, now with the worms, I love these being rigged up on a worm hook. Usually with a bigger worm like this, um, I don't go like extremely big. I don't go with like a nine knot hook, but this is what, nine, nine inch worm maybe? 10 inch worm, something like that. But you can see the body of it, you know, is only here. So you don't need a hook that's gonna be clear down here, right? You want all this curly tail stuff to move. So usually for me, I go with like a four out worm hook. You can see that's how it would fit on there. I don't have it rigged up, but that's the size of it right there. Four out uh, is kind of my go-to on these. Sometimes a five if it's a bigger worm, but a four out worm hook. Now a worm hook, uh, for those of you who don't know, is gonna have a little bit uh, straighter back and then just kind of a little U-shaped, oh, let me show you. That right there is your standard worm hook. So you can see it's got just a little bend here, straight back of the shank, and then it just goes up into a little round bend there. Now, as opposed to, which you can also use, I use them as well, are like these uh, EWG style hooks. So it's got a bigger bend in it, a little bit bigger belly. Either one works. I tend to go with just a regular worm hook on a worm because you don't need that big, huge belly. There's not a big, soft plastic to actually get through. Um, now, if you had like a beaver bait or something that has more plastic, thicker, I like to go with that deeper bellied hook. That's kind of the difference. I know people ask me a lot about that, but you can use either. I've used both on them. Um, I'm excited to sling those around. A big worm like this during the summer is awesome. If you've never tried it, Dinks will eat them, big fish will eat them. Fish just want a big meal during the summer. They don't want to expend a bunch of energy. Uh, so if they see a big old hot dog looking thing like that coming through, they slurp it. All right, last up in the bag is an injection. Now this is a triple injector that he used for this. Um, I got some kind of behind the scenes access to see his video before it was made public. But the process on this is super duper neat. Uh, so he's got an injector with three heads, three different colors to make some of these crawls and it turned out so neat. I've never used a triple injector. Looks super cool, look at that. So he's got like a little bit of the orange uh, and the tips on the claws, which our craws have around here. The kind of bluish green, which our craws are around here and a little bit lighter belly. So the match to the craws around here is spot on. I mean, those I have no, no doubts will get absolutely annihilated around here. You can see the claws have that little ridge there you know, kind of like the Rage Cross, so you know those are going to flap, have a lot of action. You could use these as a jig trailer. Um, I like throwing a claw, craw like this around timber, just Texas rigging it, and that's where I'm talking about, since the body on this is a little bit thicker, um, I would usually go with an EWG hook. Now a three, a three out looks like that would fit it pretty perfect, so I'd probably just go with a, a heavy wire three out. Um, I've used these from Walmart, the Eagle Claws. I know some people kind of talk smack about them, but as long as you're not using them in super heavy cover, they're fine. I've had good luck on these around sparse cover, um, haven't had issues with them. But those craws, whoo, man, those colors are all kinds of different colors. And it's kind of like random color. You know, it's not like 
three straight lines of color. The colors kind of melded up here in the claws. So you've got kind of these mixing of colors. A little bit of orange. You got a little bit of orange in the antenna deals there. Neat. Super, super neat. Awesome job on these, man. So thankful that you reached out uh, and even considered, you know, doing a video with me. You can see this one had just a little bit different, a little bit more orange turning into brown. You know, with that triple injector, it's all kind of how the injector puts it down in there. You can't really uh, control exactly how it's going to be. So each one's just a little bit different and random. And that's what I like. I like that each one's just a little, you know, a little tad different. So again, man, super excited that you would reach out to me, even consider me for doing something like this. Um, I appreciate it. They look great. But what am I going to throw these on? These six inch bluegill perchish almost looking uh, swim baits. I want something just a little bit heavier. So I'm actually going to be using this. I've been throwing around um, some smaller Huddlestons, uh, seven inch, six inch Huddleston um, on this. Now I've got a, I think that's a five inch Grande Bass paddle tail on there. Three eighths ounce head. Uh, but I've been using this. This is the six cents MF rod. Uh, it's a seven foot heavy, moderate fast. And you might say, well, that's an overkill for a, for a, you know, a swim bait, right? Well, the thing you have to remember is you've got to get all the way through that plastic. You've got to drive that hook, which is not a small hook. I mean, that's a, a big, thick wire hook. You've got to drive that all the way up through that plastic, get that bigger hook through that fish's mouth. Um, so if you notice on swim baits like this that you're missing a lot of fish, you might want to bump up to a rod with a little bit more power. That's why I'm going to use a heavy rod, but it's still a moderate fast, so it's not like a broomstick. It's not like a, a super stiff flip and stick, right? I've still got some tip to, uh, to cast it, um, but still enough backbone to drive that hook. Now the reel, again, you all know I like a seven speed reel. This is that new Daiwa Tatula CT. Uh, and then 17 pound uh, P-line fluorocarbon. That's the, uh, the stuff in the blue box. I don't have any here, but 17 pound fluorocarbon. And that's gonna be my setup. Uh, I went and double checked and these smaller swim baits are a five inch. You could certainly use those uh, on this here as well. I would have no problem with that. Like I said, that's what I have on there now. Yeah, that's like a five inch too. So very similar in size. Uh, that's what I've been throwing that on. Caught a couple fish the other day. Okay, for the worms. So normally when I'm flipping and pitching around um, from the bank, I'll use like a quarter ounce weight. That's kind of my go-to for bank fishing uh, with like a Texas rig. I will go up to three eighths if there's some stuff that's a little bit thicker or as I start to go deeper, but usually from the bank, I try to go with a little bit lighter, uh, light as I can get away with. So the one I have rigged up here that was right next to me, one I've been using that I really like a lot, this is that FX custom rod. It feels really nice. Um, so I like kind of that all purpose, seven foot one, seven foot two, medium heavy rod. Uh, again, I prefer a seven speed reel. Uh, so this is the seven what? 7.3 to 1 Okuma Helios, which I have really liked a lot. Smooth casting reel, feels good. It's got the bigger, longer handle with those bigger knobs. Um, feels great. Uh, on this one, I think I have 15 pound line, I wanna say. Now for the cross, these guys are a little bit thicker. So I'm thinking I'm probably gonna throw those in a little bit heavier cover. I like those around wood and such. Um, I mean, really a craw is versatile anywhere. You know, I think when people think craw, they live only in rocks. You know, you can only throw these as a jig trailer, but I flip and pitch these around brush, wood. They honestly, when you put them on a jig and flip them around, uh, especially a color like this, mimics a bluegill really well. So just because it's a jig and a craw trailer, don't think, uh, you know, oh, well, this can only be around rocks like a, a craw. But this is the Abu Garcia Veritas. Uh, and this is the frog version, seven foot six, uh, moderate fast, medium heavy. It's rated for lures up to one and a quarter ounce. Uh, I used to have an arc rod. That was the one I broke last year on that big six pound Karen bass. Um, but it was, uh, they call it a mag medium heavy. So it's not quite a heavy rod, but it's a little bit higher than a medium uh, heavy. So they'll call it, thank you Stubby, a mag medium heavy. Um, so when I'm going a little bit heavier, if I'm throwing like a three ounce jig with a bigger trailer, I like a little bit stiffer rod with a little bit more backbone, as opposed to just pitching around like a quarter ounce Texas rig. Now, could you throw both of these on the same thing, those worms and these craws? Absolutely, I'm kind of getting it in the nitty gritty, but something like this, or you could even just go simpler with like a, you know, a regular heavy power rod, seven foot two heavy, um, pitch those around, I've done that too. Kind of your, uh, your preference, but the way I fish around here, usually on my heavier Texas rig slash jig setup, uh, I'm gonna throw a 20 pound fluorocarbon. That's kind of my standard, just like I said, I hate breaking off. So that does it for the unboxing and rigging. Comment below and let me know which lure you're most excited to see me throw. Those swim baits, five and six inch swim baits, gosh, 
the colors on that. Cross the worms, maybe you like to see me throwing those around? Comment below and let me know. Now, again, I want to thank World's Worst Fishing for reaching out to me and asking to do a collab. Um, I think there needs to be more of that in YouTube, right? Um, we're all in the fishing thing together. We're all trying to grow fishing and help people, uh, you know, for the most part. Uh, so I think it's awesome. I think it's cool when creators get together. Uh, I've done more of that recently, and it's it's super fun. It's a humbling experience. But um, I need to get this all on the computer and edited. Uh, today's subscribe fishing friend is you, World's Worst Fishing. Thanks for, again, offering to send this over. Uh, if you haven't checked out his channel, his YouTube videos, he does great how-tos on uh, making plastics, how to do stuff like this, the injecting, pouring, all kinds of cool how-tos on that. Um, he sells this stuff as well. So... Make sure you check him out. Again, I will link him below. But that's enough for me tonight. I need to edit. So uh, thank you for watching. And until next time. Mm -hmm.